don't don't do this false um, uh, false modesty thing. See, false modesty works with smart people, but it doesn't work with dumb people because it's subtle, right? And it's ironic and it's self-deprecating. Like if you say, "Well, I'm just saying stupid shit," ha ha ha. Smart people know you're not, but dumb people are like, "Yeah, he totally is," <laughs> right? You have to be. Uh, so, uh, don't so bring any irony to dumb answer. people, right? Yeah, don't bring any irony or subtlety or anything like that to dumb people because they don't they don't get the nuance. We already have perfectly good definitions of truth. If you look in the dictionary and you construct your philosophy on the basis of truth as it is defined in the dictionary, you know, you've got a reasonably sound basis. Okay? Now, I certainly understand the idea of distinguishing between different forms of truth. I do it all the time. I talk about the small t truth, which is the pedestrian everyday truth of, of it is so or it is not. And then I also talk about the capital T truth, which is, of course, the Christian perspective, um, the reality which uh, we only see darkly, you know, the greater reality that we cannot fully perceive. Okay? The point is, is that the small t truth exists in either case. It doesn't magically change because we have a theory that opposes it somehow. And so, um, and that was just one of them. You know, the, the, his other defenders were coming up with other definitions of truth. So, when, what I'm noticing about Peterson's defenders is that whatever it is that they've taken away from Peterson is not the same thing. It varies depending on the person, which tells you right there, the man cannot be teaching legitimate, confirmable, reality-based truth because people are coming away with different understandings of exactly the same definition, exactly the same term. Um, one of my partners noted in the precess that Peterson hides his definitions. He tries to give himself massive wiggle room by putting everything in quotes. It's unreal. It is, I would tend to say, that it is indicative of a fundamentally dishonest mind, which, by the way, we know Peterson has. By his own account, he talks about when he was younger, that 90%, I think at one time he actually said 95%, of his self-talk was dishonest. Peterson lies to himself. When he's telling you how important it is to tell the truth to yourself, when he's, when, he's, when he's reminding you of that, he's actually reminding himself. Remember, Peterson is a, uh, what we call a gamma. And so he is constantly engaged in an ongoing monologue with himself. All of his fans think that he's talking to them. But he's not. He is desperately trying to fix his own broken mind. Now he's brilliant. He's very intelligent. Because only someone who is as intelligent as he is could construct a delusionary system to protect a broken mind that is as superficially coherent as it is. He's smart enough to construct this system in a way that those who, who are of normal intelligence cannot see that it's bullshit. 
it is iron clad bullshit. You know, it's bullshit that is wrapped, you know, gift wrapped by a very high IQ, you know, relatively sophisticated intellect. I, I forgot why it was so significant. His nose grows, right? And it, it grows to ridiculous length. And why is that? So uh, there's a bunch of things I've learned as a clinician. And one of them is, because you're often in really weird situations with people if you're a clinician, because things happen that don't happen normally, and you don't know what to do. And so what I've learned is I just say, what, I just say what's happening, whatever it is, regardless of what it is. You know, I'll just try to describe it as accurately as I can, and not worry about, in some sense, not worry about the consequences. You know, like I'm not going out of my way to cause trouble, but if you're in a really, and I'm telling you, this can save your life at times, especially if you're dealing with someone who's paranoid, who's really paranoid. You do not lie to someone who's paranoid and violent. Because as soon as you lie, you're aligned with the forces that are persecuting them. And they're going to be, because paranoia makes people hypervigilant, like they're on amphetamines. In fact, you can make pe people paranoid by giving them enough amphetamines. And you can make paranoid people more paranoid by giving them amphetamines. So they're hypervigilant because they feel that everything is predatory and against them. And so they're watching you like you would not believe, way more than you're watching them. And if you flicker a lie while you're talking to them, and they're really on the edge, you, you're done. So it's, it's one thing to really know, if you're ever in a really bad situation, and you don't know what to do, you tell the truth minimally, you don't disclose too much, that's just another lie. You tell the truth minimally, and carefully, and hopefully, and you might get out of it, you might get out of it. But if you falsify it, look the hell out. So. The truth is a, real, is a real mechanism of protection in dangerous situations. You know, so if someone's trying to intimidate you and you, you think they might get violent and they ask you if you're afraid, then you tell them that you're terrified and that you hope that things will go okay.